Welcome back to McLaren Port Huron's Today's Health. I'm your host, Barb Winters, and we're talking with board-certified obstetrician-gynecologist Dr. Karen Niver about advanced maternal age. Okay, let's step back a little bit, Dr. Niver, and go before the pregnancy. If you're in your 30s and you're thinking about, gee, I think I'd like to have a baby, what things should be top of mind? Top of mind should be your health. How are you doing with your health? What is your body mass index? Do you need to lose a little weight first? Are you smoking? Great time to stop smoking. Are you exercising? Very healthy for your overall well-being, psychological and physical as well. What medications are you taking? Some of them can be very dangerous with an early pregnancy, especially in the first trimester. Are you taking a vitamin? You should be on a well-balanced, a woman's vitamin or a prenatal vitamin, including folic acid, because we know that that helps to decrease the risk of neural tube defects when before you get pregnant, hopefully. Um, I, I think those are major things, Barb. Um, I think also where you are psychologically, if you have a good support system, if things are in order at home. Really important things. So uh, let's say the woman is finds herself pregnant. What's the first thing she should do? Again, be on that prenatal vitamin right away. Um, try to figure out when your last menstrual period was. Hopefully you've been keeping track of that, but that's a very important piece of data in terms of dating the pregnancy. And then make an appointment with a physician that you're going to feel comfortable with in terms of the journey and the delivery. Yeah, how many? How soon should you make that appointment? How soon should you see the doctor? I think it's important to call the office uh, as soon as you know that you're pregnant. Um, we will then normally give you a projected due date. And based on that due date, we like to see someone in the office around 10 to 12 weeks of pregnancy. Okay, so that's pretty early. What, what do you do at that appointment? We do a full physical examination, including your pap smear, your pelvic exam, cultures. We check a urine. We do a number of blood tests. Um, based on the physical exam, we will consider a first trimester ultrasound to be certain that your due date is very, very strong, very certain. That helps us when it comes to the third trimester and planning delivery. Um, again, look, reviewing vitamins, um, looking at your immune status. An another component before pregnancy is to be sure that you're up to date on your immunizations. That's very important. And um, kind of plan, outline what to expect for the next uh, several, several months. It, which is really important, I'm sure, because most women are what's next and when do I know the gender of the baby and all of those kinds of things. So I'm sure you can answer those questions at the first appointment. Yes, ma'am. And then we'll also look at um, lifestyle habits. If a person is smoking, we're going to very, very strongly encourage the cessation of smoking, which is not an easy task. But up to 75% of women will stop smoking when they're pregnant. It's a wow. great motivation wow. to do the right thing. And in my judgment and in my experience, the best and easiest way to do that is just cold turkey. Mm. Cold turkey with counseling, whether your counseling is, or your support person is a spouse or a family member or even a professional counselor, really important to, to do the right thing to try to, to get rid of that habit. If the counseling doesn't work, then I would have someone consider a nicotine replacement therapy, which could be a gum or it could be a, uh, a pill. Um, and if that doesn't work, then we would think about uh, a prescription medication called bupropion, which is Wellbutrin, which is a category B, very safe with pregnancy, and tends to have the side effect of well-being. It gives mm -hmm. somebody a little boost. We don't use it specifically for that, but it does have a nice side effect. So I'm, I'm thinking it's important for the woman who's trying to quit smoking, if she can't quit cold turkey, to really be in conversation with their doctor about what can I do and not just experiment with things that, that aids to um, help you 
quit smoking. Right. Any methodology that is successful, obviously, is what we're looking for. But even the, pa the nicotine patch and the nicotine gum um, can be a very successful method. The gum helps to satisfy that oral fixation that comes along with the, mm -hmm. you know, the rote physical part of smoking. So super important to do your very best at that time to stop smoking. The other thing we would look at um, would be exercise. Exercise, as we know, generally, all of us, men and women at any age, is very important. But when you're pregnant, it becomes even more important. Um, regular exercise, in my judgment, is just mild to moderate aerobic exercise, which would include five or 10 minutes of stretching and warming up, 30 minutes of exercise, and then five or 10 minutes of cooling down, stretching again, cooling down. It's pretty easy to accomplish if you put it into your schedule. We find times in our schedule for all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. So, um, and even if you did that every other day or even a couple, three times a week is very, very helpful. Are there um, exercises that if you're pregnant, you know, might be harmful? I'm just thinking about, can you be a runner? Can you play competitive tennis? Can you, you know, swim, are all those things safe? Most of them are. We would recommend against any strenuous exercise, heavy weight lifting in the gym, or contact sports are not a good idea. Um, you don't want to um, uh, be exposed to unnecessary trauma or uh, something that might make you fall. Again, trauma. You don't want to, um, in the first trimester at least, expose yourself to very, very high body temperatures. 102 degrees for prolonged periods of time in the first trimester can be dangerous to a developing fetus, but that's more the exception than the rule. Most people will um, participate in brisk walking or jogging, cycling, swimming, rowing, um, aerobic dance, yoga, all of these things are very common and, and very healthy choices. Would there be an indication to the woman that her exercise um, isn't supportive of her pregnancy? How would she know that if she was? If she was becoming lightheaded or winded, uh, short of breath, um, or found herself uh, with, with tachycardic, if she took her pulse and found that her heart rate was in prolonged periods of time greater than 110 or 120, um, another thing to consider is exercising in the supine position in the second or third trimester where the large pregnant uterus, the fundus, would be pushing on or putting pressure on the vena cava, which is the big blood vessel that returns blood to the heart. And most of the time in that position, a woman's not comfortable. She doesn't feel well. She's struggling to breathe, so she'll make changes to accommodate for that. But um, the little fetus is pretty resilient and has uh, good mechanisms and is surrounded by a good cushioned bag of water and actually thermal regulates pretty well. That's, that's really reassuring because otherwise it'd be easy to just stop doing everything because you want to make, you know, take care of your baby, which isn't the best thing to do. No, it's not. And, and to expound just a little bit more on the exercise, because it gives you such better cardiorespiratory uh, capacity, increases your flexibility, better muscle tone and muscle strength, um, better balance, the studies are telling us that in the first stage of labor, which is dilating the cervix between zero and 10 centimeters, um, regular exercisers have a decreased length of the first stage of labor. It makes their labor uh, a little bit more efficient. The second stage is kind of debatable. I think it helps in the second stage. That's the actual pushing stage because of the strength and the balance and the flexibility. Mm -hmm. The studies are a little iffy on that, but my own observation would support that. And the studies are telling us that for all of these reasons, um, people who regularly exercise likely have a decreased risk of C-section. If most women at in advanced maternal age pregnancies um, do have a good outcome of their pregnancy, most women absolutely do, Barb. 
Um, I think as we get older, sometimes we get a little bit more <laughs> anal compulsive. And I think maybe the tendency would be to worry a little bit more and be a little bit more anxious. But most outcomes are excellent. And I always counsel my patients, <laughs> you know, an anxious, nervous mom mm -hmm. often will end up with an anxious, nervous baby. So take a deep breath, do the right thing, and and Let most your, of the time, things go very, very well. Let your doctor worry about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> worry, that, that's worry what we're for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we're actually going to switch a little bit and talk about infertility. But first, this message. <laughs> 